All right, it is now six o'clock. Um, I will call this meeting to order. Has this meeting been posted, Ms. Midzik? Yes, it has. And roll call will show that all five board members are present at tonight's special board meeting. This time I invite you to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So uh, is there any communication you'd like to share this evening at tonight's special board meeting, Kim? Yes, communications. While the Safer at Home order has been lifted and gatherings are not prohibited by an enforceable order in our community, the Greendale Board of Education will continue to meet in a virtual environment because of the construction underway in the Greendale High School Library. Board meetings will continue in this format until the regular space at Greendale High School is available for in-person meetings. During recent board broadcasts of board meetings on YouTube, the chat feature has been enabled, allowing for public comment outside of the opportunities in board policy. In addition, the nature of a few comments have been contrary to behavior we expect in schools, specifically policy 411.2. For these reasons, we will no longer provide the chat feature during board meeting live streams and thus eliminate a platform that may put the board out of compliance with policy. The board continues to welcome comments from the community as part of the board agenda. Persons wishing to address the board are asked to email citizen comments at greendaleschools.org or call 414-423-2701 at least 30 minutes prior to the start of the meeting. Comments submitted after 30 minutes prior to the meeting will be read at the next board meeting. Comments submitted will be read by an administrator during the public comment portion of the agenda and are limited to three minutes or five minutes if representing a group. To be included in public comments, citizens are asked to include their name and address. Comments received without a name and address of the person submitting the comment will be shared with the board in writing, but not included in the public comment portion of the meeting. Greendale High School administrators organized and held a cap and gown distribution materials pickup activity on Thursday, May 21st. All but seven members of the class of 2020 visited Greendale High School for the drive through event. A video recap of the event was shared on social media this weekend. Many thanks to the board members and staff participants. The activity was very much appreciated by students and their families. Twinite leadership has been working with Park and Rec to plan for the season. As the safer at home order for schools is still in effect through June 30th, we have interpreted that our facilities are not available for organized non-essential activities. The Department of Health Services has provided guidance around youth sports, but it is guidance and not an enforceable order. The Public Health Department is offering the same guidance as the Department of Health Services. Twinet is working on a plan to provide for the health and safety of participants before entering into a usage agreement with the schools. Greendale Schools has been working to safely provide essential services through the Safer at Home order, throughout the Safer at Home order, uh, including daily meal service, community food drive, blood drive, materials pickup, as well as building maintenance and construction. And finally, Maggie Olson was announced as the district's director of equity and instruction last week. The news was officially released and posted on the district website and it is shared there. The board will take action to approve the contract at the regularly scheduled board meeting on June 1st. And that concludes communications. All right, thank you, Kim. Um, any comments from visitors that you'd like to share at this time? We have not received any comments for this evening's meeting. All right, then we will continue on uh, with the uh, purpose of tonight's meeting. Um, as we heard at our previous board meeting, um, a discussion regarding um, refinancing and, and um, settling up uh, some debt that is outstanding. So uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the resolution authorizing the redemption of certain uh, districts taxable general obligation refunding bonds series 2020 dated September 4th, 2020, I'm sorry, 2012. Um, so Jonathan, you uh, put together a report. Is there more that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think if I can, I'll step through um, that report. Um, I think we can get screen sharing set up and I can just um, drop by kind of section by section and talk through some of that information that was provided. It's obviously very technical with a lot of numbers. And so I wanna make sure that I have the opportunity to talk through that in further detail and answer any questions that the um, board may have. You now have screen sharing access. Great. 
So with that, um, here's agenda item six. And so to start off, just to give background on the topic, um, our fund 38 debt um, is non-referendum debt. So we have to utilize that number per the DPI standards for any funds that are debt payments that are not through referendum. And so this issue dates back to 2006 um, as part of the state retirement system at that time. Um, that issue was for 5,415,000. And just like school districts all across the state, the district took out debt in order to pay that amount. And it was later refinanced in 2012 for 4.595 million. There's currently six years remaining um, of payments on this, and there's a current balance of $2,765,000. And so we provided a schedule of what those payments look like. In principle, they're going to vary from $410,000 to $515,000 per year, and then you can see the various interest um, amounts. It's going to go down each year as the total amount of principal remaining um, on the debt dwindles. So in the preliminary budget report last week, um, we talked about this as a possibility for prepayment. Um, the rules on that prepayment are that one, we, we have to wait until it's callable in order to make those payments. As of March 1st of 2020, this issue became callable. So it took eight years um, for that to occur, um, but that just recently happened in the last two months. So the district has the option to prepay any or all of this debt in $5,000 increments. So basically the board could take action to approve five or $10,000 in prepayments all the way up to prepaying the entire amount. Alongside that was question about what costs would be incurred in going through the financing to uh, prepay this amount. Um, there would not be anything from a financial advisor standpoint. Um, the only cost would be a legal fee that was estimated to be about $500 to $750. So in terms of any additional fees the district would take on to prepay uh, these debts, the maximum was $750. So the why um, is important here, why this is being considered. When we think about our budgetary values, we've been sharing the 10 budget principles with the board as we've gone through this process. The first one being that we're proactive, positive, and putting students first. And so we've been proactively identifying the fact that funding commitment for K-12 education likely is going to decrease for next year versus what is currently in law. Um, and the districts controlled by the revenue limit. There was $179 per student that was built in for a revenue limit increase in the 1921 biennium budget, in addition to um, other increases, including special education categorical aid. And we don't know um, what the state will continue to be able to commit to um, in the next biennium. So, in order to make budget modifications that will fit with those changes, we've looked at multiple areas. So one is um, in the time being, until more is known with state revenues, um, we currently are freezing salaries for the 2020-21 school year. The second item we've looked at are benefits. Uh, we're currently in discussion on our health insurance benefits and looking at multiple options. Um, due to our trending in health insurance, we are currently at about 110% of uh, premiums paid. And so our renewal rate is looking um, su substantially higher um, than, than what it did a few months ago. And so we're aggressively renegotiating that and also understanding that that's in the landscape of uh, potentially declining state revenues. 
We've looked at budgets for our technology expenses, curriculum, building budgets, capital expenses, summer school costs. We've looked at creative ways to create uh, additional revenues through high cost aid, through our workers' compensation plan, and other areas to try and find ways um, to meet the budgetary needs. The range that we're looking at in various scenarios, um, uh, the, the two, two of the five scenarios that we're looking most closely at right now, our range is anywhere from 634,634 to $1,580,000. So the difference between what we had originally projected as our 2021 budget versus what we think could happen. Um, and that higher amount factors in a $2 billion state shortfall um, if it were to be spread equally amongst all entities and all um, school districts. Could be as high as 1.58 million. When we built the preliminary budget on May 15th, we set that preliminary budget with a shortfall of $695,000. So um, anticipating that there would be um, a change within that those those two ranges that we had identified. And so even with these items that we've set above, um, we still may be looking at reductions in staff and or programming if the revenues are cut significantly from the current levels in state law. So our desire is to maintain high quality programming in our district. We know that those investments have an impact on our students. Um, one of the items that we shared was from our recent benchmarking report and I think identify some of the value add. We saw that trending of performance on the school district report card, which is just one way that we measure um, our academic success. There are many other, um, but when we look at the district report card, we found that it was heavily correlated to economic need. Um, but in the Greendale School District, we saw that our district significantly outperformed uh, some other area districts that, that had similar numbers in terms of that economic need. So the investments that are made, um, we know have an impact on student performance. We have a really hardworking staff that's been doing everything they can um, during the current shutdown to provide quality education virtually. It's not the same thing, but they're working hard to adapt to that environment. Um, and within a week of that shutdown had programming ready to go for students. And we know coming into the fall that there's significant work that we wanna do um, to make sure our students continue to perform at high levels. So there were two options that were um, identified of four presented at the preliminary budget meeting last week that we did further investigation on. One of the options looked at a prepayment of this debt down to the level where um, short-term borrowing would still not be required. So what could we invest without impacting that? And then a second scenario looked at spending and prepaying debt down to the level where the board has a policy on fund balance and maintaining a 15% fund balance level. So I'll talk about each of those separately. So number one was the prepayment um, down to the cash flow borrowing level. And when we talked about that about a week ago, we had identified that uh, near the $900,000 range. And since we've um, had further discussion on that, we've looked at different scenarios with the financials to date, um, what we've uh, had in expenditures through the midpoint in May and looking at revenues, doing some projections on that. And uh, based on those scenarios, uh, brought that number down slightly from the 900 to 800,000. Um, overall, we believe that that's a number that can be targeted. Um, so that could create flexibility in the budget 
for a two year time period. So the feedback we heard was, what could we do in the near term of having that impact? So utilizing that 800,000, we could reduce the levy 400,000 in the next school year, 2021, and then another 400,000 the following year. Um, we know that those are gonna be challenging from a state budget perspective. Because we have six years of payments remaining, if we invested in the next two, there would be an additional four payments that would still be remaining, um, but we would um, uh, target still avoiding that short-term borrowing. The one caveat we have to short-term borrowing is timely payment of property taxes. So the most recent payment we received um, was about eight to nine hundred thousand dollars lower than what we anticipated. So there's some delay um, of getting those receipts at the village level. Uh, we've confirmed with the village that when we get to our final payments late in summer, that those are expected to be um, at the the normal amount. So we will catch up um, that funding, and so believe at this time that we could make the eight hundred thousand dollar investment. Um, uh, the prepayment um, and still avoid short-term borrowing. If something significant were to change in terms of defaulting on property tax payments, we would put in place a backup option that could provide us a temporary line of credit or cash flow borrowing to ensure that we would continue to pay our commitments on time. Um, but basically something significant would have to change for us not to be able to make um, uh, make our payments with, without the cash flow borrowing. So that's one scenario. The second scenario was a larger investment at $2.4 million. Here, this investment could cover more years of that debt borrowing. So when we think about sustainability, once all six years of debt payments are complete, um, then that revenue limit capacity will exist into the future. What we do know about that model is it's gonna require approximately 1.6 million of short-term borrowing. And so that is something that the district has made a priority to avoid um, and could create inflexibility if there was a large portion of um, fund balance invested now, could create inflexibility in the years to come um, if there's additional challenges in future biennium budget and, and having um, resources available in terms of that fund balance to meet those needs. We asked um, some questions about each of these scenarios with two of our stakeholder groups. We presented the information to our district budget committee. So we've got staff members that are helping us to grapple with um, those projected state state losses, that 634,000 to 1.58 million, helping us to understand what questions we should ask and helping us to devise a survey we'll take in the coming weeks and utilize some of that information per, for prioritizing the preliminary um, budget in June. So when we talked to that group, we shared, we shared information about um, what these scenarios um, would look like um, and um, looked for any further follow-up. We didn't poll that group, um, but we shared and updated them on the conversation and why. And so they understand um, the complexity of, of all this and the, the different roads um, that we're exploring to try and um, get to budget for next year. So we did talk with that group. The second group we brought together last Thursday was the Citizen Finance Committee. And so that group uh, of these two options unanimously was pointing to the prepayment of $800,000. Um, that group shared that they, um, some members felt pretty strongly about the idea of continuing to avoid short-term borrowing um, uh, in the, the near term and that that should continue to be a priority for the district. So that group pointed to scenario um, number one. 
some other additional facts to add to the discussion. So when we think about any prepayment investment that's made, if there was a decision made this evening, we can call that debt and make the prepayment before the end of our financial year. Financial year ends June 30th. So any additional prepayment of debt is going to be aided at about 10.88%. We've got it rounded here to 11%. So what that means is it becomes a tax levy offset. So not new revenue in, a, in additional aid, but next year it could mean taxing less than we would have otherwise to the tune of 11% of whatever is invested. So in scenario one, if we have $800,000 there would be potential additional state aid of 88,315. Um, in option two, there'd be 2.4 million spent. So additional aid of $263,040. Those are one-time offsets to tax levy. So we'll get the aid the following year in the, the year that those dollars are spent. Um, number two, current interest rate for district investments. So trying to identify what we are receiving in terms of dollars. Uh, the interest rate market has fallen um, uh, drastically in the last couple months since the pandemic. Um, and that's intended to keep money out into the market so that the stock market can hopefully stabilize and business can stabilize throughout the, the pandemic. Um, what that means in terms of cash that we have is that we're not able to, to go out and um, get larger interest rates in the near term. Those were starting to go up um, in late 2019 and early 2020, um, but now at a quarter percent. And so you can kind of compare that quarter percent versus what we're paying and the, the debt payments in, in coming years. Um, Short-term borrowing, we shared information on that. The average cost is 1.6% the last five years. We anticipate that continuing to stay low in the near term as long as interest rates are low. Number four, and this is gonna tie in um, with uh, our, our recommendation, our projected surplus, what we're targeting is to be under budget two to $300,000 for the 1920 year. We've had some intentional holding on building budgets, knowing that the situation was evolving and we were maintaining resources um, for, for what we would need later on. We made the investments we needed to make so that we could have a virtual instruction function the way it needed to be, um, but other expenses we held back on. Number five, I provided a fund balance history. And so you can see over time that the fund balance has varied from about 6.6 .6 million up to 7.6 million. And there has been um, some, some variance in that um, from year to year, uh, but it's been generally in that, that dollar range. Um, the, the point of the budget each year is making sure that dollars get invested into the classroom. So besides the focus of maintaining sufficient fund balance to avoid short-term borrowing, um, other dollars are invested. There aren't dollars just being kept um, to build up a fund balance. Everything's been done very intentionally um, from a financial perspective um, by the district. Then we took a look at the cash position. So sometimes when people hear about the fund balance rate that we're at about $7.3 million, they think that we have 7 million in the bank um, at all times. And so this gives you by month kind of what that looks like. When we get to the beginning of November is where we get to our low point in cash for the year. And so this year it was at around $900,000, um, that, that low point in cash. And when we ran models for this next year, we saw that potentially being even tighter and we did some conservative um, projections. And so that's really our area that we're targeting is where will we be um, financially in that, that November time period. 
by the time we get to the beginning of December, we're getting larger state aid payments. And then we get to the middle of January, we get our property taxes. And that's where you see the chart kind of spike up is when you're getting those property tax payments during the year. Um, so then we provided just some comparison info on cash flow borrowing um, versus those debt payments. So that was, again, looking at that option number two, uh, that we at least wanted to explore that because the rate for short-term borrowing can be less in the near term than that um, uh, the bond interest we would be paying. Um, but that was not, um, even with this information, that option number two was not met as the preferred when we presented that to the, the, the Citizen Finance Committee. So when we talked with uh, legal counsel about this, the bond counsel, they identified that if there were action to be taken tonight, that we should have identified in a resolution how much would be there. And so based on the feedback we had gotten from that citizen budget team, the recommendation we have presented here matches with that and would be the 800,000 in debt prepayment for the following two years would be $400,000 each. And um, that would be with the anticipation that we're targeting to underspend two to 300,000 for the rest of this year. So those savings are being um, put into that prepayment of debt. And so the fund balance would be targeted to end at 6.7 to 6.8 million, which would put our fund balance percentage at 21%. And so the linked resolution um, goes over those same, those same items of what that prepayment looks like. So that's a lot of uh, talking from my end. Um, so I'd be happy to take on questions that the board has right now. All right, thanks, Jonathan. And, and I, I think, you know, you highlighted the, the way we, we collaborate with our village residents as well as with our staff. So uh, thank you for doing that. Um, what questions does the board have? Jonathan, if we wanted to um, say next year or the following year, prepay more if we have the funds to do it, could we do that? Absolutely. Yes, so the board could, and I think that needs to be tied with whatever the decision is, and I am going to scroll um, back up. So. If the board um, moves forward with this recommendation at $800,000, I think the piece to keep in mind is that um, that prepayment has a substantial impact on having funds available in the budget the next two years. Um, but in terms of interest savings, it would save about $28,600 in interest. And so the bulk of that interest is still due those last four years of the debt borrowing. Um, so it should come, if the board would take this action, it should come coupled with a strategy to continue to do this, to continue to prepay that debt um, and do um, some interest avoidance in the near term as funding allows. Because um, otherwise in two years, um, you're looking at needing to increase that debt payment amount substantially and then potentially, however, the, the budget shakes out additional changes to the, the budget at that point, two years from now. So I actually had a question that kind of builds on, on that. So one of my question was around um, the sustainability aspect of this, right? So, I mean, one of the reasons the um, looking at a larger amount and prepaying that uh, was the fact that that frees up money uh, indefinitely <laughs> uh, versus this basically gives us a two-year gap um, of potentially payments. There's still some payments that we have to make in this because it's a $40,000 shortfall on principal plus some of the interest you know, that we have to be thinking about um, as well. And what, you know, so then all of a sudden we hit 2022 
um, 2023 year, and then while we have another 450,000 and then a growing uh, debt payment that comes back. And, uh, you know, hopefully it wouldn't sneak up on us, but it could sneak up on us if we start allocating those funds for other things. So is, is the thought to, um, if we do the prepayment to make sure that, you know, kind of building off of your comment, Jonathan, do we just dis- redistribute kind of the, the funds for the next six years? So we basically now are down to a $2 million debt payment that we should be thinking about, even though we know next two years are going to be tough, that we aren't spending all those funds, but rather, you know, trying to hold, you know, 300000 or more per year to put towards uh, this debt. So ultimately what that would mean is that it frees up a hundred ish thousand dollars in in uh, funds that we can reallocate to support operations to serve students plus obviously the I think you mentioned twenty eight thousand dollars in interest savings so another twenty eight thousand dollars in interest savings um, and I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that or if that's kind of the district's plan you know Kim and Jonathan to continue to kind of look at the 300 plus thousand per year so that this gets paid off and we don't have that cliff that we fall off in 2022, 23, because we've reallocated all the funds that, <laughs> that um, we have to now pay. Yes. I mean, the goal is to not um, pay things and fall off a cliff in <laughs> two years. The goal is to um, eliminate the debt in the long run. Um, that and if you'll recall at the last board meeting um jonathan talked about paying off the 2.4 million as the preferable total cost of ownership that that we'd actually pay less over the the course of the loan by doing that but in talking with the citizen finance team which is important we need to listen to our taxpayers and our citizens they were uncomfortable um with um putting us at risk of having not having fund balance and eliminating flexibility that would result in some more substantial cuts. So this 800,000 comes with a plan that at any point in 2021 or 2022, you could come back and say, you know, we've really reflected on this. We've had further conversations with our community and now we're gonna use fund balance and go into short-term borrowing intentionally to get this debt paid off because the cost of ownership is less. You could do that in six months or you can do that in 18 months, but, at this point, we think that the quick action on what doesn't take us into short-term borrowing would be preferable, and then continue to monitor this as we get more information from the state. Because with the recovery, there could be increases in funding, in which case it was a smarter move to only pay off the two years and uh, come back in 2023 um, with increases in state budget, um, allowing us to uh, sustain costs and um, not need to dip into fund balance further. So um, we're making this recommendation after reflection and and discussion with the citizen finance team, with the budget team. And this is a conservative yet um, thoughtful and creative approach to to get us moving in the direction to eliminate this debt from the books. Yeah, I guess when I look at this, we accomplish a couple of things. We do have some interest savings because we are prepaying um, this debt. Um, We are given some flexibility with how we spend our money um, in the next two um, budget cycles because uh, the the concern is that the state may, you know, the concern is what will the state allow us to increase revenue um, for the next two budget cycles. So it gives us some flexibility there. Um, It does use some fund balance, but it's a conservative approach, which still allows us to maintain a certain amount of fund balance um, that um, in essence will uh, prevent us from having to uh, do some short-term borrowing. Um, So, you know, and then it doesn't preclude us from doing something more in, in the in the near term, you know, we could do something more paying off the remaining years um, as more information is known. Um, so I, I think this is a good approach and, and I'm glad that you, like I said earlier, you vetted this with uh, the finance committee, the, the citizen finance committee and 
um, the, the budget staff as well. And we had a pretty lengthy conversation last time, and I think overall uh, we appreciate your your ability to think outside um, the box and and really take advantage of something that just kind of came new uh, early this spring. So um, just to respond to Thor's comment, so the board would have the option of looking at the recommendation differently. So if there's an $800,000 prepayment, the board could choose to split that over all six years. The difference is going to be that it's going to only have $133,000 budget implication for the next two years. And so in the scope um, versus what we're looking at in potential budget impact at the state level, then you can just take a look at what that difference is, 133 versus 400,000. But the, the board could make that decision. The resolution isn't written that way. So it would have to come to another um, board meeting. Um, but outside of the aid impact, that could be done um, that way. It's gonna have less impact these next two years. Um, the last time we spoke with the board, um, I to, to follow up on, on Joe's comment, we heard from the board that um, there would be that ability to see what the next biennium budget is going to bring and then reevaluate if there's a larger amount um, spent now in principle for the 2021 and 22 years. Um, reevaluating that prepayment of debt. Um, but I did want to make sure that there's some thought that there needs to be a strategy to that um, mm -hmm. because just tackling those first two years won't, um, doesn't create a sustainable solution. Yeah. And, and I guess that's where, you know, if we can do that in a couple ways, right? We can, one, we can do it through our budget and just holding certain amounts in our budget to make sure that we're being, you know, able to continue to kind of pay ahead. Um, or you can, like you said, distribute it over the eight years now versus the two years in principle. Um, but that absolutely commits us to, you know, having funds in our budget that have to be, you know, allocated to, to pay down our debt. Um, for the specific years that we have, right? Because if we're only, if we're breaking that out, there's still quite a bit of debt that we'll have to pay next year um, versus having a little bit more leniency on that debt. So I think it makes sense to pay off the principal for the next two years. Um, but I do think that we should be you know, holding some funds in our budget still for this purpose versus relinquishing all those funds to be reallocated to support other services. Um, and especially until we understand what's coming from the state uh, <laughs> um, to make that decision. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would recommend that you approve the resolution as written and direct us to um, essentially intentionally what you're suggesting, um, reserve money to roll into fund balance at the end of the 2021 school year and the 2022 school year so that we have that additional fund balance to support payment of the subsequent year's debt if we don't take action sooner. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think some of those decisions, I, I guess what, what, what's helpful for me is some of those decisions will become clear once the state gets through any budget amendment because right now we're being conservative by and rightfully so, you know, but by assuming that the but that the state is going to come back with a budget amendment and um, reduce the amount of the revenue limits for the 2020-2021 school year, we're assuming that's going to happen. I think that's a reasonable assumption. I think that's the appropriate uh, assumption. But until until the until a budget amendment is presented and approved at the state level. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to to uh, to know what needs to be set aside in, in my mind. I guess that's uh, I, I think we we should do that, but I think we should also you know that's something that we need to do as more information from the state is um, becomes known. Yeah, I just th I think if going back to assuming 
you know, something for right now to be as conservative as possible. And then obviously, as we find out more, then we can, you know, you know, make sure that we're putting money where the money needs to be put to support, you know, learning across Greendale. Absolutely. But um, one other question too was what would our, you know, based on our preliminary budget, I know that things will change, um, but what would our fund balance be if we went forward with the 800,000 as a percentage approximately? About 21% the fund balance hmm. would go to. Okay. So it's still 6% higher than our policy. So it's not an issue there. And, okay. And then have we heard any additional information from the state around the, I know there's been some chatter around uh, spending fund balance within schools and what that might look like. Do we know anything more about that? I have not heard any further chatter legislatively. What other questions or comments do people need clarification on? I, th I think though, to add to that point, Thor, and knowing that there's community um, listening to the meeting, um, there's seven point, uh, just about 7.3 million in fund balance, but there are liabilities the district has. So we've talked about the 2.7 million that's owed in this debt. Um, there's also our fund 73 for our post-employment benefits. So we talked about that specifically in the preliminary budget and there's 1.6 million that's unfunded. Um, so if you just took those two items, your 7.3 million fund balance looks a lot more like $3 million. Um, so just to keep in mind, those aren't additional dollars. We have um, uh, liabilities that, that could also offset um, those things. Um, so if there was um, um, info about fund balance, we would want to make sure that we were capturing the fact that those those debts exist, but we've chosen, um, uh, district's chosen not to prepay all those things so that dollars are on hand to avoid that cash flow borrowing as a general practice. Jonathan, what was the amount of the unfunded uh, OPEP? It's about 1.6 million right now. All right, thanks. So, so this WRS debt is is a little bit more than what's in that um, the the, un, the liability in that debt. Yes, the Wisconsin retirement system debt is 2.7 million. And that the unfunded OPEB is at about 1.6 million. Um, All right, thanks. All right, any other questions or clarifications needed or any comments? All right, then we are we are posted uh, to take action on uh, the resolution tonight. Um, as uh, I think we talked about last time, this requires a 30 day notice. So for us to pay it before the end of June 30th, uh, which is the end of the current fiscal budget, um, we would need to take action at tonight's meeting, which is why we had held a special board meeting um, so that we could provide that 30 day notice uh, and still then make payment in this current budget period. So if there are no more questions, I'm looking for a motion to approve um, the resolution. Motion to approve uh, resolution authorizing the redemption of certain of the district's taxable general obligation refunding bonds, uh, series 2012 dated September 4th, 2012 as outlined in uh, action item, agenda item number six. Is there a step? I second. All right, there's been a motion and a second to approve agenda item six, resolution authorizing the redemption of certain of the district's taxable general obligation refunding bond series 2012, dated September 4th, 2012. Any further discussion? Is, is the assumption that we're gonna, we're gonna hold at least for the time being that fund, some funds in our, you know, redistribute that and hold some of the funds in our budget for next year. 
upon passing this resolution. I mean, obviously we can change that when we get more information, but I would be comfortable to vote yes if the answer to that question is yes. That is, that's what will bring you at the June 15th meeting. And so you'll have an opportunity to approve at that point how we distribute. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, then I'm gonna take a roll call vote, starting with Kim. Yes. Noel. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Thor. Yes. And I am yes, motion carries. Uh, thank, thank you again, Jonathan, and, and make sure that you uh, share our thanks with the entire business office. because uh, This was laid out very clearly and uh, a lot of work, I'm sure, went into getting some of this information um, and you know, preparing it for not only the board, but as well as the uh, community. Uh, so thank you. Um, yeah, I, I thank you. All right, then uh, we are at the, that was the sole purpose of tonight's board meeting. Um, anything more from administration? Otherwise we are adjourned. No, just to thank you very much for uh, taking action and, and making it to the special meeting this evening. And we look forward to seeing you next week. All right. We are adjourned until our next regularly scheduled board meeting in, at the first Monday in June. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.